comes to the realms of academia and science, battles are fought whenever new ideas or new evidence emerges to challenge the mainstream understanding of the times. Bloodless wars, but wars nonetheless, are slowly waged across many domains of knowledge, paper by paper and book by book. At stake are the prizes, the label of expertise, the tenure of education and the authority that derives from establishment. Some of these disputes are precise using the scientific method of hypothesis, experiment and result to produce concrete conclusions to unhorse old ideas and to move our understanding forward, such as that that occurs in the disciplines of biology, mathematics or chemistry, for example. Other disciplines are less precise and rely on the interpretation of incomplete sets of evidence, the weaving together of data and observation, as happens in fields like archaeology or paleontology. One battle that's been heating up considerably over the last decade is the fight for the foundations of human history itself. I'm not talking about modern history, or even what we refer to as ancient history, at least as we know it in our textbooks today. I'm talking about what happened before this, the ground that the tale of our past is built upon, and the basis for all of recorded human history. And that is the timeline of our evolution as a species, our rise from the Stone Age and into the era of civilization. It is these older aspects of our past that seem to be in an ever-increasing state of dispute. The arguments being made are legitimate, they are coming from many different vectors and many different disciplines of science. Many arguments are based on discoveries that have only been made in recent years. And collectively they're making the case for a re-evaluation of the story of our past ever stronger. Everyone is aware of this story to a greater or a lesser degree and in its most basic form it goes something like this. A while ago, we humans, Homo sapiens, evolved, emerged directly into the Stone Age, fiddling with sticks and rocks and contentedly hunter-gathering our days away. It's here that we spend the vast majority of our time on Earth, tens if not hundreds of thousands of years, then... All of a sudden, we get the bright idea to team up, raise some forts, build some walls, create some gods, make some rules, and then voila, there's civilization. The ancient Sumerians kick us off, then... Egypt, Babylonia, the Greeks, the Romans, the Mongols, China's great dynasties and all the rest. Soon we're playing with swords and castles and serfs and slaves. Now it's time to up our painting game and we have a renaissance. Someone observes that steam goes up, which is still the basis of our entire economy, even nuclear power stations are just big kettles for making steam go up. We begin a love affair with gunpowder and money. We put a meter on electrons and sell them to everyone. And the Industrial Revolution begins the inexorable rise of modern technology. Then, all of a sudden, hello, here we all are intangibly connected to this thing called the internet, watching thousands of tiny flashing pixels on some device of unimaginable complexity while sipping a latte wearing sneakers and synthetic clothes, and mostly doing so as if this was all perfectly normal. The idea that we are all here as the direct result of an unbroken straight line of human progress coming from the Stone Age, this is one of the foundations upon which our modern human identity is formed, yet it's this very foundational concept that is under siege. The evidence that our history is longer and much more complex just continues to stack up. The narrative that this new evidence weaves is frankly alarming, it tells a tale of unimaginable destruction. A tale of the rise and fall of unknown yet undeniably mighty civilizations, of advanced technologies that were created, used and then lost to us. A cycle of death and rebirth on a scale that is beyond anything contained within our current version of history. A version that, in the light of all this new evidence, can simply be considered but the latest revolution of the cosmic hamster wheel of human civilizations. Let's put some of this new evidence into some context. Here's a New Scientist article from 2006, which was, if you're at all like me and in complete denial about getting older, shockingly 13 years ago now, although you wouldn't know it from the music that I still listen to. This article lays out the timeline of human evolution, the mainstream story of history as it was taught in 2006. Let's make a graph and talk about us kids. Around 195,000 years ago, we emerge onto the scene and into the Neolithic Stone Age. 
here we stay for many tens of thousands of years until we start eating mushrooms, having visionary experiences, drawing cave art, burying our dead, creating symbolic and abstract concepts, also called the Great Leap Forward, which was some 50,000 years ago, around the same time that humans first colonised Australia. Then roughly 12,000 years ago, and still globally in the Stone Age, mind you, modern humans finally reached the Americas. The Stone Age eventually comes to an end only a scant 6,000 years ago from now, when the first true civilization that leads directly to us begins with the ancient Sumerians in Mesopotamia, which was mostly in what is now modern day Iraq. Now let's look at some of the new evidence since 2006 and how it should be affecting this timeline. A new find in Morocco made us instantly more than 30% older than we first thought, pushing the earliest date of our species back to some 300,000 years ago. New DNA evidence analysed from Neanderthal remains estimates our split with them from a common ancestor as far back as 800,000 years ago. Not only that, but discoveries of entirely new species of hominids like Homo floresiensis or the Denisovans is proving that our origins as a species are much more complex than we had ever believed. As our timeline extends further back, it also means that we coexisted with our cousins for a very long time. I believe there is much more to find here. New archaeological work has smashed our understandings of human timelines in the Americas, with digs like the Cerruti Mastodon site in San Diego or the Bluefish Caves, showing that humans were in North America as much as 130,000 years ago, and certainly much longer than those dates claimed by the Clovis First doctrine of archaeology that for so long has strangled open-minded research efforts in North America. Not only this, but DNA linkages between Aboriginal Australians and the natives of South America, linkages that don't seem to exist in the peoples of Central or North America, is challenging the entire Northern Land Bridge theory of the diaspora of humanity. These findings suggest that large populations of people, groups large enough to leave genetic indicators, crossed the Pacific Ocean long before we were supposedly capable of such feats. And when it comes to civilization, the story gets even more intriguing, with many new finds pushing our supposed start date back further and further. We had first thought that civilization arose some 6,000 years ago, but the largest megalithic site in the world, Gobleki Tepe in Turkey, is now known to have been deliberately buried some 12,000 years ago, likely after thousands of years of use. The redating of the Great Sphinx in Egypt by Professor of Geology Dr. Robert Schock indicates that this structure is at least as old as Gobleki Tepe, some 12,000 years, and it's possibly significantly older. A massive man-made pyramid-like structure was recently discovered in Indonesia at a site called Gunung Padang and it has had carbon dating of organic remains that were pulled from chambers inside the structure that pushes the earliest dates of civilization possibly as far back as 25,000 years ago. And it's not just new findings when it comes to the reasons for a re-evaluation of history. There is a whole other category of evidence in this debate. And that category is that in many ways, our current interpretation of history simply does not make sense when you take a close and careful look at it. Contradictions and mysteries abound in our story of history. They attract the attention of interested and open-minded people, despite the efforts of academia in many cases to just declare that no such mysteries exist. These contradictions are often hidden in plain sight, they're in our textbooks, and they're in the astonishing megalithic evidence that is left to us in the ancient places of the world, demonstrated nowhere better than those in Egypt. Just consider the Old Kingdom period, which, according to Egyptologists, arose directly from the primitive Stone Age, and whose people did not have the ability to quarry granite. Why then is the Old Kingdom so rich in incredible granite structures that have never seen their match since? How did they build such massive granite artifacts and architecture without the ability to quarry this stone? Why are these incredible structures the earliest pyramids ever built? And this is to say nothing of the mind-bending precision that is evident in this work when you look closely, nor the obvious signs and markings of advanced tools, tools that are not found in the archaeological record. After the Old Kingdom, Egypt kept on building pyramids and they kept on making artwork, but they never came close to reaching the same technical ability that they supposedly did in the very earliest part of their civilization. Ask yourself, is this really how civilizations work? Another contradiction, this time South America. Why are there three distinct styles of architecture present in Peruvian ancient sites? Three styles that are wildly different in their technological sophistication, yet all three styles are attributed to the Inca alone. 
What can we make of the mysterious precision stonework of Pumapunku and Tiwanaku in Bolivia? Or the Cyclopean walls of Sacsayhuaman? Why do so many of these sites show evidence of just massive destruction at some distant point in their past? Why does the megalithic architecture in different places match so closely if it is from different civilizations that were separated by distance and millennia of time? Why are we only now, thanks to deforestation, finding literally hundreds of huge geometric shapes, as well as the remains of entire cities in the Amazon jungle? What about the pyramids that are dotted all over China? Pyramids that nobody has been allowed to film, let alone investigate, in some 40 years. None of these mysteries fit within our current story of history. Pyramid culture itself seems to be a constant across many parts of the world. The greatest pyramid of them all, the Great Pyramid of Giza, has yet to give up all of its secrets, despite our modern technology. Every aspect of its construction that we have managed to puzzle out, from its precise alignment to true north and to celestial constellations, its sacred geometry ratios that encode the very constants of nature, to the fact that it is essentially an accurate scale model of the Earth, all of these attributes speak to us of an unimaginably advanced understanding of the universe. An understanding that must have existed deep within the distant past, and an understanding and a capability that we simply cannot attribute to what we know of the ancient Egyptians. Why are there ancient maps like the Piri Reis map or the Oronto Phineas map? Maps that show Antarctica before it was even discovered. These maps were admittedly drawn from even more ancient source maps, maps that are now lost to us. Not only that, but they accurately depict the coastline of Antarctica that is under the ice, as verified by the US Air Force in 1960. Several ancient maps show undeniable proof of advanced technology in their projections and in their high degree of accuracy in both longitude and latitude, which was not possible for us to do as a civilization until the turn of the 19th century because of the need for accurate chronometers, which we hadn't invented until that point. I don't think that many of these contradictions nor these mysteries can be resolved from within our current paradigm of history. Nor can we truly attribute all of the megalithic work or the ancient high technology objects that are still left to us to what we know of the great, the great yet primitive ancient civilizations that make up our orthodox version of history. I love and I greatly respect our ancient civilizations, but the reality is some of what we see was simply out of their technological reach. And this is attested to by so many professionals, craftsmen, builders and, and engineers that study these things in detail. There is, however, a key that unlocks these mysteries, a solution that makes sense of all of these contradictions. And this solution comes to us from adjacent scientific fields and from a series of discoveries only made in the last 20 years. It's a huge clangor in the story of history. It's something that fractures our established timeline, and it destroys the premise of a single unbroken line of human progress since the Stone Age, the premise that the story of history is built upon. It effectively wipes the slate clean, and its impact is such that were we to be honest, were we to be truly open-minded and receptive to new evidence, we really should be rewriting the entire story of our history from the beginning. This key is known to us today as the Younger Dryas Cataclysm, and it happened in the period around 12,800 years ago, and it changed the surface of the Earth. Evidence now shows that the planet was subject to an unimaginably violent series of cataclysms during this period, most likely a series of massive cosmic impacts and air bursts, impacts from the broken up fragments of a giant comet that intercepted our planet. These events ultimately melted the glaciers, they ended the ice age, they killed off fully half of the megafauna of the Pleistocene, up to 80% of all of the large animals in the Americas, and they rose sea levels some 400 feet to the current height that they are still at today. This was a very, very dark period for life on this planet, and anything remotely resembling civilization at the time would have been erased almost entirely. The most important aspect of this to me, the undeniable fact of this event, is that all of our recorded history, all of our evidence for civilization, all of it comes after this world-ending cataclysm. Why do you think that is? Almost every ancient culture speaks to us of this tumultuous period with their origin stories and their symbolic religions. They speak of cataclysm, of destruction, of flood and fire. They speak of the world being destroyed by a war in the sky and later being renewed. They speak of their ancestors living through these events, of gods, of giants, of great civilizers with magical high technology-like powers that came from across the sea. 
And it's not just cataclysm, but there is another curious commonality between many ancient myths and religions. And that is that many of them consistently encode advanced celestial knowledge in their symbolic tales. And this case has been made for many different cultures that span the entire globe as well as millennia of time. Our own religions, our own modern day sun cults, they also encode this celestial knowledge and they also speak to us of cataclysm, of world ending floods. Science is now backing up the truth that's encased in these legends and these religions. And the evidence for almighty destruction during the Younger Dryas is writ large on the earth itself, in places like the channeled scablands of eastern Washington state. In recent months we've even found what appears to be one of the craters from this cosmic impact, a massive gaping hole under the Hiawatha Glacier in Greenland. So it is from within this context, the context of cataclysm and near extinction, that the human timeline and the mysteries of the story of history can begin to make some sense. It becomes a tale of inheritance, of extended timelines, of civilizations rising and falling. A mighty global civilization that existed in the distant past, a civilization that was struck down and swallowed by the earth or subsumed by the seas. A civilization that left traces of its greatness in architecture and in artifacts. It left legacies of its knowledge encoded into the cultures and religions of those people that eventually followed. After all, the ancient Egyptians even called themselves a legacy civilization. A legacy of what or of who? It is from within this context, the context of a lost ancient high technology civilization, that the contradictions evident in megalithic architecture could be explained, and the enigmas of obviously high technology objects could be fully investigated and solved. Yet despite this deluge of new evidence, our tenured academics and their textbooks in the field of history are very slow to change, if not outrightly hostile towards any new ideas. If questioning this dogmatic version of history is heresy, then this is a label that I happily accept. And I consider this channel to be something of the modern heretics toolkit. Many others are also on this path. Authors, researchers, fellow content creators. And I think a slow awakening is actually happening as more and more people realize that it is high time we re-evaluated the story of our past. You will find content on my channel that explores many aspects to this debate, from cataclysms of the Ice Age, looking at new scientific evidence, investigations of ancient sites, and the search for evidence of ancient high technology. My hope is to spread some awareness of this debate to get more people interested in uncovering our real history, and above all to get people captivated by the true mystery and wonder that awaits those who wish to visit the astonishing ancient places that are still left to us around the world. I want us to heed the warnings that are transmitted from ancient civilizations, warnings that are indicated by the astronomical alignment of so many of their structures and written into so many of their stories. We need to understand the dangers that lurk in the cosmic environment of our future, as ultimately I believe that our priorities as a species need to change if we hope to survive in the longer term and eventually propagate ourselves into the stars. My name is Ben and you're watching Uncharted X. I wanted this to be an introduction to my channel and an overview of what I'm trying to do. If this is the first time you've seen any of my work, then welcome to the channel. I hope you find the rest of my content interesting. I'm a lifelong student and a fan of history. I've been traveling the world, investigating and filming at ancient sites and other interesting places for many years now. I've had the chance to interview and even travel with many of the experts working in this field. And I'd like to think that I have a curious and open mind when it comes to new evidence affecting our vision of the past. I'm not championing any specific agenda, nor do I claim to have all the answers, I definitely don't, but I'm open to any idea that brings real evidence, as ultimately my goal is to go where the evidence leads, no matter how uncomfortable or threatening it is for the mainstream academics working in this field. I'm committed to the scientific method, and I think that if we apply ourselves with open minds to all possibilities, we can make some real sense out of our past. I hope you'll join me on this journey. I'm committed to pursuing this goal. I quit my day job a few years ago to try and do just that, and I need some support to make it an ongoing concern. I'm extremely grateful to those that find some value in my work and have already seen fit to contribute towards this effort. I try to work on a principle called the value for value model. If you get some value for this, please do consider returning some of that value back to me, be it sharing my work, tipping me as you might tip a server, or perhaps even signing up on the crowdfunding sites, Patreon or Subscribestar. 
All of the details on how to do this are available at unchartedx.com slash support. Please give it a look or please do hit me up on the social medias. I will see you all in the next video. Peace.